California's Disneyland is set to reopen on April 30th with limited capacity just one year after being shut down amidst the pandemic. During this time, the company has doubled down on its streaming efforts with Disney Plus and ESPN Plus. And joining me now is Walt Disney CEO Bob Chapek from Disneyland itself. Bob, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back here on the show. So everybody is curious about the demand picture. We're hearing speculation of a roaring 20s comeback. How would you characterize the demand you're seeing as you look at bookings into the summer? We're thrilled with the response that we're seeing from our guests in terms of future reservations and intent to come back to our parks. I think it's a function of two things. Number one, confidence that you know we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel for the pandemic, but also a tremendous trust in our brand. You know, we've been able to operate across the world at Walt Disney World, for example, for the last nine months, and we've done so responsibly. We've had the NBA bubble that was so successful, and I think guests know that Disney's going to do it right, and that brand trust really leads them to want to come back to our parks and experience the magic and knows that we're going to be responsible as we do that, and they can have a great time. So the date is April 30th for California, but you're You've got 15% capacity limits in the red tier. You can get up to 25% if we get into the orange tier. Um, kids are thrilled, but investors want to know, can you make money with these kind of limitations? No out-of-state residents as well? As we've said from the very beginning, there's a couple requirements for us to reopen the park. First one, as I mentioned, is we have to be able to do so responsibly and make sure that everybody has a great time while also you know, being safe. At the same time, uh, we're only going to open up if it could be accretive to shareholder value. We're gonna be able to cover uh, our variable expenses and make a contribution towards profit. And that's been the case since we started reopening our parks nine months ago, and that'll be the case with Disneyland. So we're confident we can do that. And of course, as conditions improve and the constraints are relieved, we'll be there to ramp up and make sure that everyone has a great time and welcome even more people back to the magic of Disney. So what are some of the new technologies that you've used over the last year that you think might stick around post pandemic? Will temperature screenings continue, for example? Will you use the reservation system a lot more? Well, in addition to all the health guidelines that we've uh, been following uh, across the world, you know, masks, temperature checks, increased hygiene, six foot social distancing, we're also going to be introducing a new reservation system that's going to enable our guests to have a great time no matter when they choose to come to Disney. Of course, nobody ever wants to go through a pandemic, but our teams here have been hard at work making sure that when we reemerge, that we're going to do so in a way that's actually going to improve the guest experience, even versus a pre-pandemic situation. And our guest satisfaction scores since we've reopened across the world have shown that, indeed, our, our guests are even more satisfied than they were prior to the pandemic. We've learned some things. We've learned to operate under constraints all the time by delivering this great same Disney magic that you expect. But, you know, we, we've been in a fortunate situation where we've had a lot of demand in the past. In many cases, that has exceeded what we can actually supply in terms of how many people we can put in the park. And there's been no situation that's been, you know, more like that than we've had upon reopening and really having to operate under some really tight constraints. But we've gotten even better and better at it. And I think it's going to create a, a reemergence scenario where magic is going to be even greater for our guests when they do come back to our parks. Now, Disneyland Paris looks like it will be the last to reopen. They were scheduled for April 2nd. That's gotten pushed back. Do you think it'll reopen by summer? Well, we certainly hope so. You know, we follow the guidelines of uh, local uh, uh, governments and local health agencies in terms of telling us when it's safe for us to reopen. Uh, I agree with you that we'll probably be the last of our parks to reopen again. Uh, but uh, when it does, we'll be there again to operate responsibly and make sure that uh, we have magic for everybody. Now, Disney Plus has, by all accounts, been a, a remarkable success. You just surpassed 100 million users. You released Raya and the Last Dragon recently uh, for an additional premium fee. 
I know you're not going to share numbers on that, but but can you tell us at all how how well that early release premium model on digital is working when customers know that they can get it for free just a few months later? Are people buying? Is that something that'll stick around when people are going back to theaters? Well, there's two reasons to do this right now. One is obviously pandemic oriented as people have some level of anxiety or uh, about returning to theaters uh, or the theaters aren't open up in, in big numbers. And so it gives them an option, gives them some flexibility to watch the film at home without necessarily having to wait for three, four months to see it. But also there's some fundamental consumer changes going on where people are becoming, let's say, impatient. Uh, they want to see movies the way they want to see them, when they want to see them, and how they want to see them. And we've been thrilled with consumer receptivity to our premier access strategy. And whether or not this becomes a big part of our strategy going forward is really going to be up to consumers. You know, they vote with their pocketbooks. They're going to tell us how they want to watch movies. And we're going to, you know, be responsive uh, to the consumer. They're going to drive that evolution just like they're driving the evolution from linear or broadcast world over to a direct-to-consumer world in general. So on that note, you still have a May 7th release date for Black Widow. And if the name of the game is consumer flexibility, will it still only be in theaters on that date? Um, and are you sticking with that May 7th date? Well, as you know, uh, flexibility is something that we've been working uh, hard against, and our situation and our conditions change. I mean, just a few weeks ago, theaters in New York and Los Angeles weren't even open, and now all of a sudden they're open, and so we're waiting to see exactly how guests respond, uh, prospective theater goers respond to these reopenings, and we're going to remain flexible. Uh, we'll make the call, uh, you know, essentially. Uh, probably at the last minute in terms of how these films come to market, whether it's Black Widow or any other title, but we're watching against consumer behavior. And if consumers uh, are happy, we love the theatrical window. As you know, uh, we've had uh, unbelievable success in theaters, and we think it's important to build our franchises. But at the same time, we don't think it's the only way to do it. So we're going to remain flexible, and we'll see what happens over the next couple of months because so much is changing. It's such a dynamic environment that it's really hard to predict what's going to happen with consumer behavior in the next month as it comes to reemergence, you know, sort of back into uh, the world of normal. Uh, and uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll be watching very carefully and make the call when we have to. Now, you've got a big rights negotiation happening with the NFL. You just got uh, a big deal with the NHL. You've said you want all rights deals to involve ESPN+. Plus. So what are the possibilities for the NFL on ESPN+. Plus? Could you get the Sunday ticket package? Well, we want to make sure that any deals that we do with any sports uh, entities going forward not only envision uh, the ability for us to toggle at will towards our direct-to-consumer platforms like ESPN+, Plus, but also at the same time operate accretively for our shareholders. And those are two requirements that we're going to have going forward. Uh, our ability to toggle you know, from linear to direct-to-consumer is really, really important. And we believe that we can do so in a way that's not only going to make our shareholders happy, but make our guests happy and lead them into this new world of direct-to-consumer businesses. At the same time, a lot of people still like to watch broadcast in linear. So we're going to practice a hybrid model going forward. Last quick question, Bob. Are you still planning to release Nomadland in China as planned, given the controversy around Chloe Zhao, despite, you know, she's been racking up the awards? But... Um, some controversy with the Chinese government. Well, we're really, really proud of Nomadland and all of our 15 Academy Award nominees this year. Such great films, uh, such a great opportunity for our guests to watch our films, uh, not only in theaters when they feel comfortable okay. to do so, but also go to Disney Plus. And uh, as, uh, you know, the governments across the world enable us to go and take our films there on various platforms, okay. including theatrical, we'll be there for them.